Hello everyone, my name is Abhishek Jain and through this video I am just going to share my experience on why did I fall in love with the Docker technology. So a few days back I was supposed to build a solution by using a neural network library known as Keras. To install a Keras I need to have a TensorFlow installed on my machine. To have a TensorFlow installed on machine, I have a very specific version of Python to be installed on my machine. So let's quickly see which version I was running into. So uh, for Python, I was having Python 3.7. But to install a TensorFlow, I need to have a Python 3.6, right? So when I try to install a TensorFlow which is required for the Keras framework on which I am supposed to build a solution. So when I try to install a TensorFlow, I was getting this could not find a version that satisfy the requirement TensorFlow, right? So the, the option I was left with, either I just install the Python 3.7 and then install the Python 3.6 or I can spin off a virtual machine on my machine and there I can install a Python 3.6 followed by installing a TensorFlow, then for then installing a Keras and run on it, right? So I was just Googling to figure it out what can be the simplest and the quickest way through which I will not be required to uh, adopt any of the workaround which I was thinking for, right? So luckily, I just got to know there is one Docker image which I can use to make Keras up and running on my machine. So Docker is, theoretically, it help us to bundle all the dependencies, all the installation, all, you know, the configuration related changes we can put into the Docker images. And not in this video, but definitely I have a plan to create, you know, uh, the tutorial on a Docker where I'll be explaining how can you create your own image, image file. But for now, the moment I get to know there is one image which contains, you know, uh, which is related to the Keras framework and I could not stop myself. What I did is I just take that particular Docker. I just put and pull that particular image. Sorry. The image name is, uh, let me just that this was the image I just got and I'm really thankful for those guys who has built who has built this particular image for Keras framework so I just pull this up uh, since it's already been pulled for me so it won't take much time and it will just simply check whether the version which I have whether it's up to date or not so see image is up to date it means there is no change from from the one which I had pulled I mean few days back then what I can do is I can simply run this Docker con Docker image, which will in turn uh, create a Docker container on my machine, right? And you can see I just use the Docker run this ID. Uh, don't worry about it in my upcoming videos. Definitely, I try to create a Docker tutorial where you will get to know all these commands and all this information for now just don't worry about it just see how Docker is easing down the problem which we used to face almost on a daily basis. Right. So this one is the URL which I got in return when I just run that particular command. Right. And I can put this command here. Now I have a Ju Jupyter running there. I can do I can build the solution on Keras. Right. To just quickly check whether which version I have all those stuff like I mean TensorFlow it was not there but now I can use it. Similarly, I can run, I mean these, you should not be worried about, I mean these are just very specific commands related to the, you know, the Python. So you don't need to worry about that, right? So what I'm saying is, it comes, you you can just, you know, bundle up all your dependency, okay? And you can just create an image and you can just put it on a Docker Hub. Uh, and from there, you know, whosoever in need, they can simply pull that up and they can start using it without, you know, uh, worried about whether they have to depend, whether they have to install this dependency or that, this version or that version, right? Similarly, the another problem which I was facing is, I don't know whether you have tried it or not. I mean, few days back, uh, due to some reason, I was supposed to have Postgres running on my local because I was, I was supposed to build some solution uh, 
uh, where I was trying to put some data into the Postgres, right? And when I just tried to see the installer uh, um, on Windows, and that was, you know, uh, I, I installed it, but, you know, it, it was very cumbersome in terms of, you know, uh, for the beginners to figure it out how they can install the Postgres, right? So uh, I did, I just simply tried to see whether I have uh, any Postgres related image or not. So what I did is I just used this Docker search command and, the, and I just put this Docker search Postgres. And this particular command will give you whether the Postgres image is there or not. Now you can see these many images are already there and you can pull any one of them and you can install it and you can start using the Postgres, right? And let me just quickly show you, with, let me just quickly check whether I have a Postgres image or not. Uh, I do have. So let me quickly run that. I can run it and we can quickly see We can get the link and address and we can quickly put the image. Yeah, that seems to be yeah. So now what we can do, we can get inside this Docker container to get inside this Docker minus ED. So I am inside the Docker container now, right? And the another thing which I wanted to quickly show you, uh, we can see uh, we should have this, yeah. So this Docker container is running. And now we have a lot of commands, you know, we can get inside the Docker container. Uh, once you get inside the Docker container, you will, uh, let me just quickly again get into the Docker container. Now here, if you will see, you will see it's pretty much, you know, the Linux based environment. So I haven't installed any specific Linux based environment. It is coming with that particular image, which I downloaded for the Postgres, right? I'm, I am on window machine and that's the beauty of Docker, right? So it's now you can understand now uh, the theoretical definition of Docker, which says it's provide us an operating system label virtualization. When I first read this particular line, I was not sure what exactly that means, right? But when I start using a Docker, then, I'm, then I realize what exactly it means, right? So this is what my experience with Docker, and it really eased down, you know, to install, not only installing the software, but as a developer, if you are building your application and your application is going to be deployed into the different, different machine or the different, different environment, you can always create the image of your solution and you can pass it on to the respective team where they can just install that particular image in their particular environment. They can have a same look and feel, right? So similarly, if you will pull this particular Postgres image and you will start using it, you will also get the same kind of feeling, right? So, uh, so, so I, I'm really loving this technology and I really want to know uh, after watching this video, uh, if, if you can also play around with Docker and just you can share your feedback. I mean, how do you feel about the Docker technology? Right. And that would be great. And now uh, what I'm going to do uh, after this video, I'm just going to start uh, another video tutorial series on Docker because I got a lot of requests from a lot of my viewers on YouTube, not only on YouTube, but on a LinkedIn uh, request also where people are asking me to come up with, you know, the tutorial on a Docker so that they can also uh, learn and they can also utilize this Docker technology benefit or the strongest point which Docker is having for them. Right. So that's it from my side for this particular video and thanks for watching this and feel free to put your comment and any feedback or any suggestion if you have and if you want me to prepare my tutorial series for Docker in a very specific way or you want me to include in that, please feel free to put that in comment section. I'll be more than happy to incorporate your improvement and your suggestion. Thanks for watching this once again and keep learning and stay tuned for my upcoming videos.